Most truck reviews suck. Most car reviews suck. This truck review by me, the guy that's had this truck for like five months and driven it 10,000 miles is not gonna suck. If it starts to suck, turn it off. Nobody should watch sucky videos. Put the camera angles down real low, not even lower. The angle you take it at makes it look bigger. Very important. Do I look bigger? These are not dad's shoes. These are daddy's shoes. If you can afford to drive an F3, F250 trimmer lariat with lots of good packages on it, then you probably have enough money that you have to wear white shoes. So as mentioned, 23 F250 Lariat trimmer, 6.7 liter, high output motor. Gonna talk a lot about that one in this video. It is fully customized. I call it the tank because I'm a dorky YouTuber and I have to name all my cars. I have driven it for like five months, but like for two months of those, it was in shops getting mods done. So I've really only driven it three months but I have put 10,000 miles on it going to almost every single ball field between Chattanooga and Johnson City. I've done very little work in it. I have hauled just a little bit and towed just a little bit. And we're gonna go through all the things that make this truck awesome and really crappy at the same time. And in this video, I am gonna tell you what I paid for the truck and what I paid for the ridiculous amount of mods. And if you're my wife and you're watching this, I love you, honey, but turn the video off because I want to stay married to you. This is the 23. Dude, I, I can't see. You can't see me? This is how Doug does it. Hold up. Can you see me now? This is the 23. This is the 23 F250. This is 350. Jeez, motorcycle's in the clip. This is my 23 F250. Do you have my face in this? Don't screw this up. This is your one chance to be my editor videographer so because this is predominantly a race channel did y'all know that we got like race trucks and stuff on this channel <laughs> mainly f-150s when i went to buy an f-250 i was buying it because i needed something that was so powerful from the factory like this is that i would not upgrade the drivetrain meaning the motor transmission rear end any of that stuff so that's the plan on this vehicle. I wasn't gonna do any mods at all. And I've only done like $30,000 worth of mods. So doing pretty good so far. We haven't changed the motor out. This thing has 500 horsepower and the most torque of any production vehicle ever put out. And I'm not comparing this to like some hyper car that might have like, like if you compared it to like a Rimmick Navara, that's what it is. They probably have more torque. This has 1200 feet. It's got 1200 torques. That's all, I don't, I don't even know what torque is, guys. I know it feels good uh, under my foot. Matter of fact, let's do like a little pull right here. Hold on to your horses, Andrew. Whoa, we're spinning. <laughs> Whoa, we're spinning 37s. <laughs> we spin them in two gears right there. I know what that means. But let's talk about the 500 horsepowers because I do understand horsepower a little bit better as I do have a couple vehicles knocking on a thousand horsepower at the wheels. 500 horsepower. So let's talk about that. I've done the math. It's sound so you don't have to like Google me or anything. Trust me on this one. One real horse is equivalent to like 13.9 horsepower. I mean who come up with that? Like who named horsepower but it really one horse does like 13.9 of them. So if you take the math of 500 horsepower, you divide it by 13.9 horsepower per horses, you come up with like 33 or 34 or even 35 real horses that eat hay. That's, that's a lot to have. Like you gotta have a piece of land to be able to do this. Whereas with this, you don't even have to park this in a garage. So Ford's giving you, it, it, the average horse costs like $3,000 in real dollars in America. So you would have to spend little over a hundred and two point five thousand dollars to be able to buy as many horses as it would take to create the horsepower of this one f-250 and and what they don't tell you is you get all of those horses but you also get all these modern features because horses don't have bluetooth you can't argue that horses don't have cup holders they don't you you can't put you can't be riding your horse and set your cup down horses don't have hitches if you want to hook something up to a horse and you just plugged it right in the back 
you'd be sticking something up the horses. In this thing, if you stuck something right in the back to pull a trailer with, it would be going in the hitch receiver. So it would be perfect. It comes with that automatically. Horses don't have air conditioner. I have air on my butt. So does Andrew over there. We have air back on me. Put the camera back. I have air on my butt while I'm driving. And I don't think that your saddle or your horse has that. So Ford's giving you one heck of a value with 500 horses for less than the cost to buy 33 horses. I think the math on the last one was a little odd. I think it's 14 point, I think one horse Andrew, is 14. I've told you not to second guess me. And for that, you see that sun? I want you to get out in that sun and film me taking off in this truck so we can show them the horsepower. Okay. Don't stand in the shade, get out. don't know of another truck that can do that from the factory on 37s because that was amazing you got to admit that Dodge Chevy nobody can do that because this comes with 1200 feet pounds of torque if you've got ten thousand dollars burning a hole in your pocket get the high output 67 diesel it's a big number just finance the truck for like 120 months and it will only cost you like three dollars two dollars extra per month over the term of the loan, but the engine is at, and the tune and the upgraded turbos and everything you get for all that is absolutely worth it. If you're on the fence about that, don't buy the gas one, just buy the big bad killer diesel. So you might be asking yourself, hey Brad, or you'd be asking me, you'd be saying it to yourself, how's this thing tow and haul? Well, obviously really good. It's a F-250, not a Ford Ranger. I haul a lot of stuff around local in Knoxville using the truck bed. I fill this bad boy up every single weekend all the way up to here and all the way up to the front with stuff for ball games and the step makes that easy. So today I'm hauling wheels and tires for my GT350 here. A little bit of a race car build on the channel. Most dudes that like F-250s don't really cross over into the $150,000 supercharged flat plane crank race car for the street with custom everything and a wing that actually moves up and down with a computer and a gyrometer that has GPS in it to tell it when to put resistance on it. But if you're into that and you're one of those people, subscribe to the channel and check out that build. Get down low. Like show the, make the wheel look cool when I'm, no, 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 me too though. Like get, you put this tire over here so I can put it on later. I don't, I don't have anybody else do work on the cars. I do all of it. What's that? What's up with this here? Oh, you want to know about this? This is what I call, no, come over here. Dude. This is my F-150 Fivo Coyote VMP Odin Supercharger on it. It's pretty fast. The only thing it's ever beat it is right over here. This right here, this is my, um, Jeep, come over here. You gotta start doing this without me having to tell know. you everything. Right there. This is my, I call it the Reaper Hawk. That's the Wolf, the F 150 is. This is a fully built motor. I bought a Dodge. And I have to say that this was one of the reasons I bought the F 250. I bet you wondered how I was gonna make this relevant. This thing tears up all the time. It's really fast. It is dynoed at like 916 wheel horsepower, all wheel drive, it's fast. Why don't you tell me how my sunglasses on inside? It beat the truck the other day. That video is doing really, really good on our channel. I've made like $1,000 off of filming that and I only used $600 worth of gas in that video. But enough about that, let's talk about F-250s. What's that? You see what happened? You are getting paid to film and you didn't jump up here and help with these tires. I Look, come in close and look at this. You oh, see what happened? No. Hey, come here. That doesn't come out. It's on you, dude. No, Get these tires out. off. Yeah. No, no, no. Just film. I got it. Like, I can't lift these. These are my jugs. They're big jugs. Like, six gallon jugs. You jealous of my jugs? Um, so, these hold E80. Let me do that hole. I, you can't put that on YouTube. This is my jugs. You put E85 in them for the race stuff. 
and um, I like to have it here because the closest C85 is up the road. So if you're wondering if this thing will haul, uh, it'll haul all the jugs in the back of that like a boss. And like I was saying earlier, if you hook up a tow hitch right here, I've been told that that right there will pull thousands of pounds. Actually, we've hooked up and carried the Jeep down to try to get it fixed at barf tuning. So it hauls really good, it's very stable. You don't even know stuff's behind you. I know everybody says that with their Ford Ranger and their Colorado Chevy trucks. Like, oh, it'll tall everything and then you won't even feel it. Like, well, this you really, really won't feel it. The trimmer, 250, fun fact, is actually an F350 for the suspension. But, because I'm that guy, all the F250 trimmer suspension is laying over here in the floor in a pile because we took it all off to put this Carly suspension on. And I'm gonna tell you about the Carly suspension here in just a few minutes. So here's what I want you guys to do. YouTubers, this is where we're breaking the fifth wall right here. I think that's what they call it in TV. Here's the wall and like I'm breaking it. Everybody tries to get you to comment on their videos. All the other car view guys, like Mitchell Watts. Oh, comment this down below. I'm six foot 18. I'm a tall guy. You should watch my videos. I own a Ford dealership. I'm from Alabama. Roll Tide. If you don't know Mitchell, he's my buddy. He owns Town & Country Ford, Town & Country TV, TC Customs. He's a really, really rich guy. But he's kind of like me. He's down to earth. Here's what I want. I need you to comment down in the comments below because the more comments that I have in a video and then like the thumbs ups and stuff, it tells the algorithm on YouTube that you actually like this video. I don't care what you comment. I really don't. I say that I do all the time. Everybody else does. We don't really care what you comment. We just want you to comment. But in this case, I'm gonna come up with something catchy. I want you to make me laugh in the comments as hard as I'm making you laugh today. So if this is funny to you, come up with something funny, put it down there, and whoever makes me laugh the hardest in the comments, I can pin it to the very top of the comments. And then everybody that goes to the comments gets to see your name and your funny comment and can see that back road driver Brad Miser pinned it. And that's how I'm incentivizing you like I always have to do in these videos to get you to engage, to say something in the comments. Are you are you texting and driving? I texted Mitchell Watts um, that I gave him a shout out in the video telling him he's my best friend and that he gets people to sub to my channel. Don't be mad at me that I didn't mean anything mean with what I said in the video. I think you're driving. Bro, this thing's got self-drive. I'm gonna talk about self-driving here in a minute too because this thing actually doesn't suck. So a lot of stupid people ask me, how do you park that super big daddy truck? It looks so awesome. They really do say that, by the way. And I'll show you how you park this truck. A lot of people would assume that you just pull like way far, like this would be a good spot. See Shawnee's is over here, see that? Like right out here would be like a good area in this area. Because it's super high performance off-road truck, you just park right here. And when you get ready to leave, you can pull straight back out onto the highway. So as you can see, if I were to park my big honking truck, like up front, I'd definitely get door ding at Shoney's by an old person. If I park here, you still got opportunities to get ding. Move the camera over when I talk. Right here and over here. But if you park in the grass away from the restaurant, two things happen. Nobody can hit you. You can see your truck from there because there's not any trucks or vehicles parked beside it. But then also everybody driving by on the road can look at your truck because that's why we build them, ain't it? Right. Built the first one and two and then it was sub set A of the second one. Get back in the truck. Let's talk about the most important thing to people who drive F-250s or trucks in general. And that is, do people get out of your way when you're driving on the interstate? Because you know if you drive a BMW or any kind of Japanese car and you're trying to drive and like make people move by the left lane, it doesn't work at all. So we're gonna just do a quick little test here. And I feel like the my pillow guy, but I wanna interrupt this video. I'm interrupting my own video to bring you a very important rule. Notice I'm driving slow, but I'm in the slow lane, okay? I'm not in the fast lane driving slow. In Tennessee and probably other states, at least 52 of them, there's a slow poke law. They probably call it something different, more politically correct, 
in states that aren't as free as Tennessee or Texas or Florida. If you are driving in the left lane in Tennessee, the only reason you can drive in that lane is to pass. If you're in the right lane, you're in the driving lane. If you're in the left lane, you're in the passing lane. If there's three lanes, the far left lane is the passing lane. Everything else is a driving lane. If you're not passing, you need to get out of the left lane. People drive in the freaking left lane doing the speed limit, and there's people that are really trying to break the law, and they can't because there's people doing the speed limit or even less in the left lane, and they think it's perfectly fine. The good thing is, is this truck will actually push people out of the way. This guy right here is from Oklahoma. I mean, he's kind of going the speed limit, and he can't really get over because the people in the right lane are going super slow, but I'm gonna push him here in just a second and he's gonna actually get out of the way. Now, I don't think I'll have to put my bumper physically on his bumper. If I have to, I will. But I'm gonna show you how the F-250, look here, he's trying to put his blinker on. He's already got his blinker on. There's nowhere to go. He's putting his blinker on. I just pushed him out of the way and I only got, and I didn't plan that, I don't know that guy. He's from Oklahoma. I don't even like Oklahoma. Actually, I think Oklahoma's kinda of cool. They got a good women's softball team. So big, high-lifted truck is not just for dudes that have little appendages to feel better about themselves. You actually get the benefit. Now, this dude's in a Ford truck. He's not gonna move out of the way because he's not gonna not do the speed limit or way more in that lane. Put the camera back on there. When you drive an F-250, as soon as you lift it and put it on 37s, people start to get out of your way. Now, the people in the high end days the Hondas, a lot of Toyotas. Toyota people seem to be at least 30% smarter than Honda drivers. The worst is Nissan. Nissan people that drive crossover SUVs are the absolute worst. See blinkers, accelerating when I change lanes. I think when you buy this, you're either smarter and that's why you bought it, or you get smarter when you buy it, when you're at the closing table. I don't know which one it is, but I, I don't see many people driving F-250s, or ever. I don't think I've ever seen it. In the left lane, going slow. Like I can just, the, the, everybody's just diving and getting out of the way. That minivan just got out of the way. Everybody gets out of the way for an F-250. The Nissan people, you have to flash your lights. Is this a Nissan guy pulling over in front of me? Oh my goodness. Is that a Nissan? That's a Nissan, Nissan SUV. Road. It's exactly what I'm talking Nissan about. Now I'm gonna watch, watch what happens here. Okay, I'm speeding, not technically. Like, I'm going fast, but watch this person. They've dropped me down 15 miles an hour. I'm on their bumper. They're not gonna get over. I told you, like, this couldn't have played out any better. I've only drove one exit up the interstate. The Nissan dude's not gonna move. All right, I flash the lights. They're getting over. Yep, yep. They're from, they're from Tennessee. They got a fancy tag with flowers on it, so they're probably like graduated from some private liberal arts college. So, what is this? It's a Nissan. It's another Nissan. Versa. All right, are they getting over? Nope. Nope, they're not getting over. All right, everybody else does. I flashed my lights twice, still not getting Dang. over. Still not getting over. He thinks, because he's barely speeding, that it's, get the camera back on me, I'm to, well, Andrew. Okay, well, you were proving a point. So okay, it's... the point's proven, Andrew. I think I've made my point about Nissan people. Yeah. So I'm speeding. I'm trying to get this guy to move out of my way so that I can speed more. But he thinks in his little SL Versa that he is entitled to be in this lane just because he's barely speeding when I'm trying to do some real speeding. And now he's speeding up because he's wanting to prove the point that he belongs. If you drive a Nissan in the left lane, you're hurting society worse than global warming, the migrant crisis, worse than COVID did. Nissan's in the left lane is the biggest problem America faces today. So I'm gonna talk about how people treat me when I'm like at a gas station or something. People are always like, your truck's so awesome, man, I love that. And most of the time it's the color that they're attracted to. Probably one of the things I'm best at outside of, I won't name all the other things, but I'm top five in the world at picking stuff to customize vehicles with like color schemes and wheels and tires and the way things that can look and you can look that up it's in uh, guinness or heineken that i'm the best at modern cars in the in the world chip foose calls me all the time just to get advice on how to do cars and then west coast customs even texts me on occasion well, let's talk about this one and what stuff costs and i'm gonna have to look because it's such big numbers but I can't remember all the numbers. The actual cost of the truck from Ted Russell Ford on Parkside Drive, the MSRP, no, I do not pay at a dealer markup because I think that's stupid. 
Can you not put your hand on like that? Just relaxing too much. Go right there with it. There you go, like that. The cost of the truck is $92,360 US before taxes. You say that's a lot of money, but after that horse analogy I gave you earlier, that's $100,000 of horses if you just bought the horses and you'd have to have a barn to put the horses in with some property for them to graze on or you'd have to bring all the hay in. So I don't think the truck actually costs that much. I do think, however, the price of F-150s has gotten downright outrageous. 75, 80 grand for a Lariat F-150. When you can have this, this isn't your base F-250. Like it's got a lot of cool stuff on it. I've already shown you some of the cool stuff but I'm gonna show you even more. And it's only 92.5. I think I practically stole this truck. I'm gonna have to talk to my assistant. This spreadsheet should have been locked before I started filming this video. This isn't a video on the Carly E-Venture suspension, but I told you I would tell you how much money I spent on everything. This suspension cost $10,000. You're like, Brad, that's crazy. What are you talking about? Like you could just get a leveling puck for 250 bucks and put it on your garage. Yes, I could have made it look very similar. This suspension is electronic adjustable, so it's kind of like Magna Ride and a GT500, but for off-road. It's kind of like I have a Raptor, but it's not a little F-150 truck. It's actually on a man's truck on the F-250 platform. So it's like a Raptor F-250, kind of why I called it the tank. But it's an awesome suspension, does everything. It's bigger and badder than anybody else's suspension in the world, and nobody can really argue that. These are bronze Vision Corrupt wheels. They're like 1100 bucks. I think when you buy wheels for a vehicle, it's like the best, cheapest thing you can do. You can spend five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 on wheels. I think a $1,000 to $2,000 set of wheels on just about anything is perfect. This is a great value. It has a simulated or fake bead lock. I don't like running real bead locks on the road. A lot of Jeep guys do. It kills people. Um, you can look that up if you don't know why. This changes the appearance about as much as anything on the truck rolling down the road. They are 20 inch wheels. It goes awesome with the green PPF wrap that we're about to talk about in just a second. I'll jump on over to the tires. The tires were heinously expensive. $2,200 for four of them. They're Nitto Ridge Grapplers. Everybody's gonna ask what size are they? 37 by 12 and a half. Um, they're big, they're meaty, they sound awesome going down the road. If you buy any off-road tire besides a Nitto Ridge Grappler to save money, you're wasting money because these don't sound loud going down the road. They've got an aggressive tread pattern that make them look really cool. With the offset on this wheel and how wide this tire is, it sticks out from the truck a little bit and it slings rocks up. And I've got to figure out how to keep the rock slingage down, but I do love the way that looks. I don't usually drive through gravel and then go out and get on the interstate and try to break people's windshields. I mean, it happens, but it's not like I'm trying to make your granny wreck. I went with the AMP uh, Power Step XLs. XL because I like to think of myself as XL. I do work out. These are an awesome upgrade, even over the trimmer steps. I do like the trimmer steps. I'll probably put them on my F-150, but they just don't come down far enough for my kids to be able to get up in the vehicle. These drop down way further. Big, nice platform. Um, I do like, right here and show it, dude. When this goes up, it's all tucked, and it looks like um, the truck sets a little bit higher than it does with your, your typical trimmer running board. And then this doesn't like chew your leg up if you get the back of your calf stuck on it like the trimmer running boards do. I'm not hating on the trimmer running boards, but I'm saying that I spent $2,000 on those steps. They're more functional, and I think they look cooler than the trimmer steps that come on it. And if you've got the base ones on your 150 or 250, they don't look as good as these either. This, this is the way to go. Don't screw around with any other brand. Just go straight to the amps, get the XLs. They're sick. The PPF wrap. I get asked about the wrap on this truck at least five times a day, and that's no exaggeration. Even the race car you saw in the video that's got the big stripes with the print in it, with the big wing. I mean, that wing's like two and a half foot tall. That gets a lot of attention. This wrap makes, this, this wrap makes dudes think about doing questionable stuff to talk to me about this truck. They will go out of their way and stop a vehicle with their whole family in it and back up and roll their window down and start a conversation 
to ask about this truck. It's not a Ford color. It should be. I think Ford's doing something on the Bronco right now that looks really cool. Let me show you a little closer. It looks like freaking paint. Okay. A regular wrap could look this smooth, but it doesn't. It is easier to apply a regular wrap. This is paint protective film, PPF like you would put on the front of your BMW or your Jaguar, but it's actually colored. So it color changes the vehicle to be green instead of the black that's underneath the whole thing. Obviously I've got the top hat on it. Back up over there and show it, dude. You've got black on top. This is not the black paint. This is actually black PPF up top. We got to pick the line on where that was. Um, I don't have these uh, PPF yet, but the handles and the mirror covers will all be black PPF. Um, I'll show you an example. A good reason to get PPF over regular vinyl is I don't even know what this is or how it got on here. But that scratches. Can you see it on the camera? You see them? That's bad. Like it don't rub off real easy. So all I gotta do, come in close. I lift my thumb and rub. Uh oh, it's not coming off, dude. Oh no. Oh crap. Oh, it's burning my finger. See that? Came right off. If this was a wrap, it would have actually scratched into the wrap. But whatever it was, could have been something at a ball field, like a kid dragging a bat up against the truck. If I had just regular, see every bit of that came off, and there's no no scratches left behind. Don't make me have to like buff it out to show. Don't get too close. Back up now, dude. You're being too detailed, Andrew. Um, How are they gonna see the scratches? The scratches are gone. Just trust me. I'm a trustworthy guy. Scratches go away on this. Um, if I were to run it through a brush car wash, which I definitely am not gonna do that because I don't want to scratch my truck up. It will, uh, if I were to whatever scratches it puts in the PPF, the top layer self heals and it smooths back out and it looks like glossy butter. If you want butter for your paint, then it looks like glossy butter. Um, we've got a lot of wrap vehicles. If you scratch that wrap, it's just scratched. Um, but this right here does a fantastic job. I'm not. Dad plane, GoPro, Hero 10, most expensive camera they made when I bought it overheats when you film a clip longer than five minutes perfect for an action camera perfect for vlogging it's so easy to work with and it's daggum 90 degrees out here today it's not like we're in the texas desert filming on that lame dirt box as i was saying it heals itself we even got little details um, up here with some green to accentuate the hoodle region of this this has black ppf on it the lights, I get asked about the lights all the time. They actually have a tint on them that is PPF. So nothing's gonna cut into my lights like I was worried about that anyway. I just wanted to tint them so they'd look cool. Did the headlights, tail lights, the third brake light, the side marker lights on the mirror. Back over here, man, they can see it. The side marker mirror lights. So like everything's cool and protected. Um, I think it looks cool. 7500 bucks to do the whole truck i know you just freaked out when you heard that price put the number on the screen and like so they can just let that soak in that's a lot of money that costs way more than my first car and yes i got a little bit of sticker shock when i heard that wrapping a vehicle wrapped a full navigator for like 3500 with everything done on it all the lights tinted and all that if you ppf a car if you've ever ppf the front of a car you know it's expensive this is as hard to put on as regular PPF. That's why it costs 7,500 bucks and you get this crazy good look. And whenever I take this off someday, if it ever comes off, it'll look like a brand new black F-250 top to bottom. Let me show you this. So yes, I call it the tank, but a little girl at a softball tournament opened her mama's door into my PPF deal. And you can kind of see how thick that is it's like a big fat thick layer of skin she hit it here and here it did not get into the actual metal and scuff anything up being the nice guy that i am i didn't that girl wanted to, that little girl was gonna have to pay for it this one piece right here was gonna cost like 1500 bucks i was like don't worry about it honey so my long-term plan is just to put a vinyl band-aid over the top of that so that you'll always remember that story when you see this truck and you'll remember how good of a guy I am for not making that little girl pay. The last thing that I bought was this, this uh, tri-flip, backflip, whatever you want to call it. It's a real cheap one off Amazon, named Triad by Truck. 
truck hero uh it actually works good but it dents up because some of the stuff came broke and i got it replaced and then some it lines up good but like there's just a couple little problems with this this isn't a review on this bed cover do i like it yes does it work absolutely but i buy it again maybe i like the tri-flip deal it's 500 bucks maybe it was six um even the truck i'm about to tell you the total cost does it matter that this was five or six hundred go right there can you see the truck good uh, yeah okay the total cost of my f-250 build that i call the tank is a hundred and sixteen thousand dollars plus sixty so one hundred sixteen thousand and sixty dollars the extra dollars over it. it's like 116,000 plus 60 dollars just part one of the mods costs oh the msrp had 60 on the end of it so now that you know how much my suspension costs and that it's basically a raptor f-250 um you know without a shadow of a doubt this truck would do like moab i don't know where that's at but it's a place where people take jeeps and broncos it will do hell's kitchen or sink there's something, I think Hell's Kitchen's in New York City. And then it, it would also climb up Mount Everest. And the reason I know that, and I don't even have to check, is people walk up Mount Everest. And I know that if you can walk up Mount Everest in like a day and a half, if you had a full tank of gas with these tires and all the suspension on them, you could drive this thing probably in like an hour and a half to the top of Mount Everest. So I'll just, since we're not there in Nepal, I'm gonna show you some off-roading here that it will do. I did all of that in two-wheel drive. Imagine what it would do in four wheels. I know that wasn't extreme. Like you were expecting like full-blown, like crazy high-speed off-road. And I'll do a video like that, but I am gonna show you something pretty crazy like this is so functional and this thing will do it most people can't do this all four baby climbing them curbs you can get anywhere at ballparks restaurants like you can't get stuck in this thing oh man i think i'm scared so just out of curiosity why do you call a channel back road driver but don't do any off-roading or like back road driving <laughs> that's the beautiful thing of this whole youtube thing like i actually daily drive a tesla um i don't even like ford or off-roading or anything but when i did all the market research on what kind of channel to have is your ac good yeah okay um it, it showed me that if i would act like a redneck and do like redneck builds and stuff um because I'm like an elitist that is real smart. I'm smarter than the audience that watches my videos. But if I play dumb, I might play dumb redneck, that they will be endeared to the character that I create to be back road driver. So I basically just do all this to get people to like the video and subscribe and stuff. But I don't want, like I would never, like as the editor, you're hearing all this. I don't want any of that to ever get out because I think it would probably turn some people off. Yeah. Isn't this the brush wash? And they don't use brushes here at this one. I know. Um, just pure magic. So it's they do it with magic. See, it says pure magic. Right. I, I don't know if that's how that. Yeah. See, pure magic. This doesn't have brushes. It's um, magic. So I told you earlier I wouldn't run my car through with brushes. That's stupid. Um, but so I've already got the car clean put the camera on me I've already got the car clean for this review but I wanted to show you guys how I keep it so clean all the time um, it's the reason I put the PPF on it because I wanted to be able to run it through a magic car wash um, and if I had a regular wrap on it it might scratch and if I had a black paint and you ran it through a, a magic wash I'm just scared that it wouldn't be um, as like it would actually scratch it but the good thing is this doesn't have any brushes is that not what I mean those look like brushes a little bit well they're blue but the brush car washes they're they're yellow but on this one it's blue because it's pure magic 
So the magic is the blue. Well, if they're blue, they're not actually brushes. So they just magically take the dirt off and then oh, I better shut these windows. So, so there's no the blue means there's no contact. I I don't know how this works, but all I know is is it's not scratching me. And I've went through here. Uh, I go through twice a day, every day that I have for the last uh, since I got it. Sometimes when I was getting it worked on at A65 Diesel, getting all the suspension and wheels and tires, or if it was at Epic Designs, getting the wrap and everything on it, some days I would go pick it up and just run it through the car wash, just so that it would be clean in the shop in case I wanted to go get some Instagram or Tic Tac um, footage of the truck while it was in their shop. But like, none of these brushes, like they're not brushes. It looks like it. It doesn't scratch anything. That says magic on the pure magic. So that's how I know that I'm getting a quality. That's not a brush. See, you're getting a quality wash without the brushes. So I just want you to see. And if you got a pure magic in your area, don't use the brush wash. Use the magic wash. So I do like the 360 cam. Not that I couldn't navigate this because I could just drive over the curbs if I wanted to and like smash the sign and the landscaping but I can turn this on and just like make it perfect every time on how I drive through stuff. I will say this, Starbucks, not that I drink their coffee, uh, they have really tight uh, drive throughs with high curbs on them. I'm told you have to watch out for that, but I'm, I wouldn't drink that yuppie coffee. I freaking love Starbucks, dude. Like probably spend 200 bucks a month of this uh, YouTube money at Starbucks. It's the freaking best, dude. And their employees are so cool. Like, I love looking at the different colors of hair and the way they pierce stuff is just amazing. I freaking love it. So, the thing about having an F-250 and kids and or dogs is you have to be okay with dirt and not clean because I legit vacuumed this out two days ago and then took my kids to like 30 seconds of practice and um, it already looks like trash again. But if you have an F-250, it's not like having a Mercedes where people expect your stuff to be clean. As long as it looks clean on the outside, I think you get some rubber mats. I don't vacuum underneath them. I just kind of vacuum around the edges. Um, that's like seasoning, like everything bagel seasoning under there. It stays pretty clean and you don't have to do a whole lot of maintenance to it. The plastic looks good even when it's dirty. I think they designed it to have this patina look. So I'm, I'm really happy with how, how easy it is to clean. What's the dev thing that's on your, on your Speedo there? That? Yeah. That pops up all the time. That is diesel exhaust fluid. And you have to actually put these big jugs in. Does it suck? It's actually my favorite thing about driving a diesel truck over a gas vehicle so far and i'll show you why so you come in the gas station because you drive diesel and you buy your def fluid but it is the perfect opportunity to buy red bull and before when i just had a gas vehicle how many of those are you gonna get as many as i want to i usually get six why uh, just asking. um you want one no, I'm all right. well, these are mine um I do drink like six a day and I'm going to show you why another reason why the F-250 is good for that here in just a second. But when I drove gas vehicles uh, for daily drivers, you couldn't come in the gas station because you paid at the pump and you didn't need DEF fluid. So DEF has helped me up my Red Bull game. That's why GMC certified technicians only from the GMC certified service. You do have to be good at screwing to buy a 250. Not a good screwer. All right, so you got your little blue death deal here. I mean, if you already have one of these, you're laughing right now. You're like, why are you showing that? I'm dripping it all over me down the side because I can't ever get this to screw on the right. Show this, dude. You can't ever get this to show just right or go on there just right so like it leaks out everywhere. That stuff foams up, but it does allow you to do my favorite thing. When you get down with the DEF, use this as a funnel. And I like to put about, usually, we built like two, 
two cans in here. I don't know if you're supposed to put Red Bull in, in the gas. It's the def, it's not oh, the I gas. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. You think you put it in the diesel? I don't think you put it in either of them. I don't think you know what you're talking about. Have you never heard of Octane Booster? Yeah, but Octane Booster is Octane Booster, and that's right. That's Red Bull that you drink. Pick up your views for an Octane. You don't know what you're talking about. Let's talk about fuel economy, diesel mileage, if you will. Um, the short answer is it's not awesome. I probably get 18 or 19. The better answer is, is do you really care? If you're driving a truck that costs this much, uh, just as a daily driver, and you're not using it to haul, it's just something you got to deal with. It does have a 34 gallon tank in it, so you don't have to fill up as often. Um, I will say that I let my daughter fill up the other day. I'm kind of teaching her a few things so that she's not an idiot when she starts dating guys or, or gets married. The, the number on the, the, uh, the number was so high for what it took to fill up. She felt horrible that we used that much fuel running her around to do all her softball stuff. So she went home and cleaned her room, brought her dirty clothes down, started helping my wife do dishes, and then went and studied. That's how expensive it is. It scared the crap out of my daughter when she saw just how much it actually costs to fill this thing up. It does get 18 to 20 depending on how you drive I've got like a really soft gentle foot so I get really good mileage so that's probably what you can expect 120 bucks is just something you can plan on doing like it's kind of like owning a boat you just put a hundred dollars in it every time you go drive it that's just what it is to drive the new f-250 what is that that you're drinking out of oh this is this is, uh, just a 3d printed grenade um, koozie for my Red Bull size can no big deal the reason I had to get this is this truck has 14 cup holders like good job Ford you saw the need for dudes to be able to have like lots of different things that they wanted to carry to drink I don't and, have anywhere to and women put my drink though you're wanting to put your drink somewhere yeah I don't know, just uh, just hold it just okay. hold it see I can take I've got these nice big cup holders right there and they hold my big shakers really good but if I try to take a Red Bull and put it in this other side you see my problem? I don't want my Red Bull to slosh around. So you put it in your grenade thing and it just fits right in there. It's perfect. But I will say, I'll give them a knock. I give them an A over all them cup holders, but they didn't think of anything for a place to put my, my gallon jug of water. Now, up here is pretty good. You could put it up there but I feel like that's a little bit in your line of sight when you're driving. Ford Engineers, pretty good on that one. 14's a good number, 16's better, but if you had some place to be able to set your gallon jugs of water, uh, or even like a, an entire thing of milk, I think a lot of people would go for that. On a more serious note, I would like to say that the self-driving, got it set right now for 15 miles an hour. My hands are off the wheel. I'm coming up to traffic. Show the traffic, can you see it? Mm -hmm. I'm, my foot is off the brake and off of the gas vehicle since it's in the mode where it's supposed to keep its speed and like maintain all that I'm at zero even though number is set to 15 the vehicle says stopped right now I thought this was not something I was gonna care about or care about using but I've used it a lot as I drive through the Knoxville traffic to try to go places with my kids uh, at 5 and 6 o'clock in the afternoon because that's when all kids stuff is uh, the light just turned green it's gonna take back off and stop and go traffic. Oh, I have to hit the button. Oh, it failed me. Oh no, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, it worked the other day. Scratch what I said about it being good. It's nothing like a Tesla. Uh, let's try it again here. I know it'll stop. So I'm set to 24 miles an hour. Most reviewers would have cut that out and just said, oh, let's do it again. It'll make it work. It'll do awesome. I'm not that guy. So we're set to 24. It's down to five, four, three, two, one, zero. It left a good amount of space. I think if it goes soon enough, like the light just turned green. Oh man, I gotta hit this button right here. I pushed that. There we go. I had to push that button, but it made it resume. I wanna say that if you don't have to set that long, it resumes on its own from zero. So in stop and go interstate traffic, it actually works pretty good. It keeps its lane really good. It does want me to put my hands on the wheel. That's annoying. But what good self-driving if you gotta actually steer the car. But it's it's definitely a good assistant. You can't leave this alone at all. It is better than what's been on prior generations and all the other um, 
self-drive stuff I've had. My wife does have the Navigator. Hers is actually even better. It does have a hands-free mode. They won't put that on the F-250. Most people that buy these trucks don't option that anyway, so Ford pulled it out as an option. I think it's called Blue Cruise or Copilot 360 or some crazy stuff. It um, won't, you can't even put it on the 250s of the Super Duty stuff as of whatever time it is in 2023. And the reason is they need to save it and be able to put it on the vehicles um, more easily that, that people actually buy all the self-drive tech stuff on. Like as I drive here, if I set the number, it'll keep my distance perfect. I can barely put my hands on the wheel. It'll keep me in the center of the lane. It will keep my distance just perfect. I can't knock them on this. I gotta say this is actually executed pretty well. Do we have any sponsors in this video to pay for the build or? No, no. We don't do that kind of stuff. Um, everybody always wants you to watch 75 YouTube ads um, that YouTube puts in. And I mean, I do enjoy that little bit of those crumbs of dollars that they give me. But no, I don't have a, a sponsor for this video that's another commercial in addition to what you already have to watch just to watch this content. Uh, I would say that if you're a cool dude and you want to uh, watch more videos, it'd be cool if you subscribed and gave the video a thumbs up so that YouTube will actually show it to people instead of burying it at the bottom of video review abyss. So if we don't have any sponsors, how do you, how do we get the money to do all this? <laughs> That's, that, that leads me to my next point. Let's talk about the stereo in this thing. And because of copyright strikes and stuff, I can't actually play the music. This thing sounds awesome. Uh, if like it's the B&O unleashed, whatever expensive one with all the box checked sound on this particular vehicle that you can get. Um, if you're listening to Rich Men North of Richmond or Biggie Smalls, anything Biggie, Notorious B.I.G., all the names he went by, it sounds really really good the sound does it's very crisp it's like you've got a little sound system installed but i do like what the um the ford people did i'm gonna actually bring it up here and show you they actually installed something in the system where any f-250 now i think the um i know that the 150s don't have this but the 250s have this thing where it won't let you play Taylor Swift or Nickelback through the system. Because it's, it's in the operator system where it blocks this from being something that you're able to do. It's right there in the operator system. Don't push that, see? I'm the operator and I won't let this be played. And it's right there in the operator system. I know the sound system's good, but how do we make the money? All right, so you heard of the Oliver Anthony thing where he, made, he sang the Richmond, North the Richmond, it went viral. I like that guy a lot. He got, and it's actually here in Knoxville, Tennessee, all these national articles and international, he's a big star now and everybody's offered him all this money. So right back up where we were filming part of this video was the Cotton Eye Joe. And he inked a deal with them to do a concert there and they were gonna pay him a gob of money. But he found out they were charging like $90 a ticket. So he actually canceled with them. he would probably get sued for that and then moved it to another venue that was bigger, sold it out, and then moved it to another venue that was even bigger, the Smoky Stadium right up the road. And I think the ticket sales were only like 30 bucks a pop. And they had like 10,000 people there. So I like this dude because he's not going about this the way that every other normal person that has something go viral does. Like he's staying true to what he said he was from the very beginning. That doesn't quite explain how we make the money. All right, so you know how I said they sell those tickets for 30 bucks and that's like his thing is like, if you sell my ticket for too much, I'm not playing your venue. So what I do is I take and go buy up all the tickets for 30 bucks and then I sell them for five times that amount to, to rich men north of Richmond who wanna to go to his concert. I make the difference. If you made it this far and watch this entire cluster of a video review, then go ahead, do yourself a favor and watch another video. I've got two of them out here for you. Just pick one. If neither one of these look good, go to the channel, pick out another one. I've got the whole build video on this truck. Heck, I've got everything we've ever done right there on the channel.